All right, so we have reached the appointed hour and uh, we have a quorum. So I'll call the meeting to order um, and I'll read the standard opening statement. This is the Northampton Conservation Commission for the 28th of March, 2024. The commission is a group of unpaid volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of Northampton. We are concerned with the aid interests defined in the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and our duties also include open space acquisition and management. We operate in a way that's consistent with open meeting law requirements. All meeting dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance, and we invite public comment during our meetings. However, we ask the public to limit their comments to issues that are within our purview. Today's agenda includes only one hearing, and that's a notice of intent for sidewalk construction along the Mill River uh, at the intersection of for Earl Street and East Hampton Road. Um, and I think we have no minutes. Uh, so I'll ask if there's any general public comment not having to do with a case before us today. And if not, uh, then the first hearing, a uh, notice of intent for sidewalk construction within the riverfront area and buffer zone. Uh, applicant is the master. Department of Transportation, the location is the intersection of uh, Earl Street and East Hampton Road. Who, who's here to speak to that? Dr. Clark, um, I'm a civil I couldn't hear all of that. Your voice was breaking up. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, my name is Rebecca Clark. I'm a civil engineer at TEC. Uh, we're working with MassDOT with this notice of intent. Um, I believe Kevin Thompson from MassDOT Environmental and Madeline Deckclerk are also on the call too. All right, uh, we've seen the application, uh, maybe not all 90 whatever pages of it, but the, the important parts. Um, so you wanna provide us with an overview and summary? Yes, I can. I was thinking of pulling up the plans and kind of walking through um, the purpose of the project sense. impacts. So there you go. Okay, so I think the the main um, construction plan page should be up on my screen. Yep. Um, so the purpose of this project is really to improve pedestrian safety and accessibility in the vicinity of this intersection. Um, the project limits are along East Hampton Road near the intersection of Earl Street. Um, project extends approximately 800 feet along East Hampton Road. This is the beginning of the project, which is just a mill and overlay of the pavement. Um, and then as we get closer to the intersection, We'll be proposing new sidewalks, um, two bus stop landing concrete pads, uh, new guardrail, new pedestrian signals, new um, ADA compliant curb ramps and crosswalks. Um, I think that's kind of a pretty good overview of what we're doing. Um, so the resource areas for this project Mill River is located just to the east of our project limits. Um, the river runs under this bridge. I don't know if you can see my, my cursor on the screen. Yes. Um, but the river flows under the bridge. Our project limits are ending at the limit of the bridge, but we're in the 200 foot riverfront area according to the Wetlands Protect Protection Act. Um, the project has approximately 14,850 square feet of area within that 200 foot riverfront area. Uh, the majority of this area is existing impervious roadway. Only approximately 386 square feet of alteration to the riverfront area is proposed with the addition of the new sidewalks. Um, however, we're also altering the curb lines slightly in some areas. So we're actually reducing the existing pervious pavement by approximately 209 square feet. So net net, um, the overall impact to the riverfront area is 177 square feet. 
Um, like I said before, the project proposes to repave approximately 800 linear feet of the road, reconstruct about 130 feet of existing sidewalks, and then construct approximately 300 linear feet of new sidewalks. Uh, there are no impact to bordering land subject to flooding. The entirety of the project is above the FEMA flood elevation of 126 feet, which is based off of the 1929 vertical datum. Um, the proposed sidewalks increase the total impervious area by approximately 15,000, sorry, 1,570 square feet with less than 400 square feet of that within the riverfront area. This increase of impervious area increases peak flows by negligible amount, with the largest increase being 0 0.05 cubic feet per second. Um, the project is also within NHESP estimated habitat of rare wildlife. We've submitted a MISA checklist to Mass Wildlife who determined that the project will not adversely affect the actual resource area habitat, nor will it result in a prohibited take of state listed rare species. Um, We've received a DEP file number. We've also received techno comments, which we addressed in our letter dated March 25th, 2024, that we had sent prior to this meeting. In terms of mitigation for this project, we're proposing sediment control and erosion control barriers within the resource areas and adjacent to them. Um, and also silt sacks will be installed in existing catch basins. Um, in conclusion, I, the project will benefit the pedestrian and you know, users of this area and improve um, pedestrian safety and accessibility. And you know, we're in we're not at final design yet, but we're working towards that. So we'll continue to work closely with MassDOT and the city of Northampton for to progress that to the final design stage. And that's all I have. Are there questions or comments from commissioners? The one uh, that I had is, so this going south toward East Hampton uh, on the south side of the road, this will extend um, the sidewalk, but it, there isn't an existing sidewalk for it to tie into to the south. There is to the north, um, but so what happens at, at the end of where this project is? Yeah, so at the end of where the sidewalk ends is where that bus stop landing pad is to provide, you know, a place for buses in the area to let people off and then they continue along the existing sidewalks. Since there's no real connection to the to the west along East Hampton Road, it's kind of it's a little hard to find a place to end it. But um, I think with these bus stop landing pads, it makes a little more sense than just ending it um, kind of arbitrarily. And are there any sidewalk connections planned in the long term? That I don't know about. Um, so this project is part of a statewide um, pedestrian and bicycle, you know, various locations project. So I don't really know too much about like long-term plans for this area in particular. Yeah, I'm Maddie DeClerc. I'm the PM of the um, various locations project that um, Rebecca just mentioned with MassDOT. Um, there are no planned improvements. Um, I think we're more of a we approach these projects more of a targeted um, kind of like a bus stop connection, pedestrian connectivity um, project. And so the goal was focused on connectivity around the intersection as well as to the bus stops, which have been coordinated with PVTA as well. So um, we've been back and forth on the design and location of that. And there, there is a crosswalk, if I'm reading this right, um, up on the north side of, or I guess the east side um, on, the, on the map. I think of Route 10 as going north-south, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the, on the east side, uh, uh, there is a crosswalk. Ah, good, thank you. Um, and so the access to 
the bike path um, is also possible by using those crosswalks. Correct, yes. And that would enable anybody to go further south uh, or further, further west. Um, right. All right. Any other questions or comments from commissioners? There was concern from uh, uh, DEP about uh, how, how much improvement there was and that it's apparently not possible to improve stormwater management. Uh, what other considerations were given to what things might represent an improvement? Um, since that's part of the consideration that the commission has to um, uh, put in place. Yeah, like you said, there's not too much within the scope of this project in terms of stormwater um, improvements. Like Maddie was saying, it's more like a pedestrian focused um, type of project. Um, yeah, for the most part, we're maintaining existing drainage patterns. We're not um, really altering them by any means, and then, you know, installing the erosion and sediment controls to, to keep the runoff from going into the Mill River. Uh, and and in, is there, or was there consideration, or is it practical to think of, uh, I think in Sarah's staff report, she mentioned uh, uh, plantings or um, uh, filter strips that might, um, after the construction part is over, might also be helpful in preventing uh, runoff into the river from the road being salted or things like that. Um, I don't mind speaking to this, Rebecca. Um, so definitely we do our best to include that um, as, as, um, feasible in these types of projects. And that's typically what we can kind of fit in some sort of filter strip or whatnot. Um, I think our bigger consideration and the, th the, the primary, primary thing we were really focused on were that very minimal change in, um, peak flow rate, um, as well as the really steep slope off of the south face where um there would be the it's probably the most impactful with regards to um drainage right into the like kind of the river basin um so given those steep slopes we're kind of already already at a minimum of what we can do with the guardrail and sidewalk um and that's yeah we just assessed it based on the max maximum extent practical and that's this is kind of where we found ourselves any other questions or comments from commissioners i have a question kevin if that's okay sure. um just wondering if you could show us on this zoomed in map where you said you were there was some removal of um paved surface in addition to the addition of the sidewalk, will you just show us on the zoomed in version? Yes. Um, it's very slight, but I don't know if you can see this sort of faded double line right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the existing curb line and we're proposing to bring mm -hmm. the proposed curb line in, you know, approximately a couple feet. Mm -hmm. So that, that's where that net reduction in, um, in pavement comes from. Great, thank you. And what's that uh, surface in that expanded area or reduced area? So this is a sidewalk um, area to the right of this yep. where my cursor is. And then this will be like loam and seed grass area. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Any questions or comments from members of the public?
Sarah, uh, did a, a, a site visit. I did not since I'm basically familiar uh, with that area, but do uh, you have anything you want to add or suggest? Not really. I mean, it, it it's always worth asking the questions about what types of improvements are possible. This is a very constrained site and it's also yeah. not typical riverfront area uh, because it's part of the, uh, the flood control. So it, it's been very altered over time and, and has a lot yes. of stones and uh, uh, other disturbance. And we just approved something a couple of months ago a little bit up on Earl Street, right? I'm trying to remember what that was. Yeah, there are two things recently in this area. DPW had to go in um, immediately as it's uh, southeast of this area and clear some uh, built up vegetation from the drop structure under the, the yep. South Street Bridge. And yep. then um, that the building on the corner northwest of here, what what I think it actually, it's up on a hill, so I don't notice it when I go by, um, was going to be demolished. Demolished, right. Okay. Thanks. I remember now both of those. Thank you. Um, if no further questions or comments, someone want to make a motion to close the hearing? I move. And a second? A second. Second by Beth. Uh, if not any further discussion, roll call vote, Sarah. Right, so vote to close the hearing. Uh, David, you, I know he was having connection issues, but I think he's here. I see his name. Yes, he said yes. Okay, uh, Jen? <laughs> yes. Beth? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Kevin? Yes. All right, unanimous, thank you. And it seems... Uh, fairly straightforward. It seems like we can uh, grant an order of conditions with uh, uh, standard conditions. Are there any other um, specific conditions any of the commissioners want to propose adding to standard conditions? If not, someone want to make a motion to grant an order of conditions with standard conditions? Come on, somebody else. <laughs> oh, so moved. All right. Jen makes the motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. All right, Beth, second again. Uh, if any, not any further discussion, then a roll call to grant that order of condition. Sarah? All right, so roll call vote. David? Yes. Jen? Yes. Beth? Yes. Mason? Yes. And Kevin? Okay, very good. That was uh, quite quick. We're not even at six o'clock yet. Um, any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published? Give me a second. I'll have a quick update on an open space acquisition. Um, oh, good. And I'll mention while I'm looking for that, that, um, one second, now I forgot. Uh, <laughs> can't do two things at, the, at a time. Um, at the next meeting, whenever that is, I'm not sure that we're going to need to meet April 11th. We had the, the Mount Tom Road continuation, but I, I don't think they're ready. So we can probably bounce that and we don't have anything else. Uh, but whatever the next meeting is, we'll have consideration of the um, memorandum on, of understanding with New England Mountain Bike Association for the Sawmill Hills. Okay. It's been a little bit. And one thing that came up in my uh, other role on the Community Preservation Committee, uh, when we voted Brian uh, to, uh, as chair again, is that I can't remember the last time that I was voted oh, yes. as chair. And, the, and then I said I would add to the agenda and I forgot. I will make a note to do that. I think it's been many years. Next time. It, We've done it I'm, periodically. I'm happy if yeah. anybody else wants to nominate somebody else or themselves. But... No. No. <laughs> <laughs> you do such a wonderful job and so uh, grateful well, thanks, for your Jen. service. By the way, Jen, I'm 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 grateful that you got too busy to continue your role on uh CPC. I'm having an enjoyable time on that committee. It's a, yeah. It's good. I a broader genuinely, range of things to consider. Yeah, I genuinely think about it often and miss it. And I'm also just coming out of my very busy season, so grateful. I just, I was really struggling to read through everything 
as I needed to. So I'm excited to do it again in the future when I have a little bit more capacity and a little bit less of a young child, but I'm <laughs> glad that you're enjoying it. I understand. Well, my, my youngest is 33 and I'm long retired. So yeah. uh, well, there's, there's tough decisions to make this round. There's far more yeah, applications. Is, in the we round. don't have anywhere near enough money and a lot of applications. So, okay. So what yeah, you got, I, Sarah, miss, for, I love for, that. I love knowing the projects that are going on and hearing everyone on that committee is so thoughtful. So yeah, it's a very good committee. That's true. All right. So um, if anybody reads the real estate transactions in the newspaper, you would see one um, to the city of Northampton today from Fred Crispin, David Gugina for a pretty nominal amount. It was like 12,000 something. Uh, so this is the Parsons Brook Greenway, most of which didn't exist within even the fairly recent past, um, cobbled together from various sources. So we have Cardinal Way, way over here. This was the beginning of it. Um, and then this was all part of the, the gravel pit and the, the solar development. Uh -huh. okay. So we have purchased this, basically this underwater triangle. <laughs> Cool. So it's um it provides good you know not good walking access but some additional access to Parsons Brook and in drier periods also some additional hiking opportunities so it's not shown here but basically just this triangle piece so this area is now city owned. That's big area is it? Oh, six acres. Uh -huh. It's um they had a they had to do a mortgage release so this is something that's been in the works for three years at this point so <laughs> I don't have all the details handy like I usually would. All right, good. Do we have to do anything? Or is this just no, for information? Just, just just an update. This was approved by you long ago. Okay. Very good. It's exciting that really the connectivity there is a no brainer and it's nice to just. Yeah, it makes sense for the city to own that like contiguous area. Yeah, it, it's, you know, it's, there are other ways to mess up a piece of open space that even yeah. though it can't be developed, right. so it, right. it's good that the city has full fee ownership of that. Yeah. And the, the, not that the current owners would have done any of right. that when things happen. Um, and I mean, also there's... this gravel pit is now for sale. This was going to be the site of a marijuana development. So they they took out all of the gravel pit stuff, didn't do any of the mitigation, um, and then just abandoned the site. I believe the company went bankrupt. So mm -hmm. we're hopeful that there may be some additional access provided mm -hmm. here um, uh -huh. if we can work with the uh, with the new owners, whoever they may be. And if it was uh, about six acres and about $12,000, is $2,000 uh, uh, an acre uh, the going rate these days for yeah it's, it's about that we used to do a thousand but you know with yeah. things changing the way that they have been the, the thousand isn't real money even for backland okay but uh, i can send the numbers out don't don't pull me on them. that's right we're close enough thank you glad to know um as jen said it'd be, it's nice to have that additional connectivity all right anything else anybody we, we've had some Pretty skimpy meetings in the last don't while. Jinx, don't jinx it. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, well, later on in the spring, we probably will have some contentious housing issues coming up. Good. All right. Well, not necessarily good, but uh, good that we'll have something meaty to, uh, to take a look at. Oh, All right. Yeah. And for those who weren't on the call when Sarah asked me the question at the beginning, um, Paul will be back uh, whenever we next meet, but right now he's hiking in uh, Patagonia. Uh, so okay. having having summited all the high peaks in the Adirondacks and all the high peaks in the whites, uh, he's now taking on the Southern Hemisphere. So it's actually a train that goes through there. A yeah. train that goes? Yes. Patagonia Express. It's really? probably the highest railroad in the world. That's right. You're a train person, so you know oh, yes. about these things. <laughs> All right. Well, very good. Um, anything else, Sarah or anybody, before we close? 
there's no particular rule which says we have to go to at least six o'clock. So I guess we can uh, adjourn early today. All right. Do we need a motion to adjourn, Sailor? Officially? I think we can adjourn. All right. Then thanks, everybody. We'll see you again whenever we need to get together, which may not be in the uh, first meeting in, in April, may only be the fourth Thursday in April.